No one could have known in 1946 that the cries that echo through the Shell household would become the words that lead a football team tonight, and that Art Shell would one day make history. Shell became a great player at Maryland State College, but his personality had already been molded. Intense and focused on the football field, off the field he was quiet and thoughtful, while the death of his mother had instilled in him a strong sense of family. In 1968, Shell joined his second family, the Oakland Raiders. During the 15 seasons that followed, he developed into one of the greatest offensive linemen in history, reaching the Pro Bowl eight times. When Shell led the Raiders to a victory in Super Bowl XI, he was already preparing for the future. He approached every day as an opportunity to learn about the offense as well as the defense, and it was simply a matter of time before he became a teacher. That time came in 1983 when Shell announced his retirement as a player and assumed a new role within the Raider family as the offensive line coach. Shell was inducted into the Hall of Fame this summer. Two days after he learned of his selection, his father passed away knowing his son had received his sport's highest honor. Last Tuesday, Shell made history when the Raiders made him the first black head coach in the NFL's modern era. While his selection set precedent, it was not a matter of race. I'll do what I have to do as a, as a coach. And it just so happens that I, ha I am a black coach. And, you know, and I understand that. And, uh, and I'm proud of being a black man. You know, I'm proud of being a black man. But first and foremost, I'm right now, I'm the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders. And, and if I'm successful and, and blacks can, 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 um, can make headway by me being a, a black coach in this, in this National Football League, then uh, I'll be very proud of that. Tonight, Shell begins his work to instill in the Raiders of 1989 the attitude of the Raiders of old. Just win, baby. Tonight, the L.A. Raiders and the New York Jets on ABC Monday Night Football. Monday night fan. I remember all the big games, all the trick plays. It's been here for 20 years, and here it's gonna stay. I gotta get ready, make everything right, cause Monday night football's coming on tonight. Now all the big names have played the primetime show, from old Raiders like Blanda to the new kid named Bo. I've seen Morton through Elway ran the scrambler too and everybody witnessed what the bridge could do are you ready for some football a monday night party we got frank and al and dan they really got it started week after week it's the time that is right all my rowdy friends are here on monday night It's a beautiful night in the Northeast. You're looking live at the Empire State Building in Manhattan, and just across the Hudson River is the Meadowlands in New Jersey, and in the Meadowlands is located a giant stadium. Giant Stadium, where the Jets also play their home games, is sold out tonight. It'll be the New York Jets and the Los Angeles Raiders, two longtime adversaries in the American Football Conference. Hello again, everybody. I'm Frank Gifford. We are happy you are with us. I think everyone connected with football, and even if you're not, knows that history will be made tonight when, for the first time, a black man will walk the sidelines of an NFL game playing here in New Jersey tonight. And there he is, Art Shell, the first time in the modern era that we have had black head coach in the National Football League. You know a lot about Art Shell already. You're going to know more. And at halftime, Lynn Swan will take an in-depth look at this man. But this Hall of Famer will tell you very quietly, but very firmly, and at 300 pounds, he could be pretty firm, that he wants to be judged on his accomplishments, on his coaching record. And that record will begin tonight against a very young one and three Jets team, an injury riddled Jets team. But meanwhile, Archell has got his own problems, developing a winning team with the one and three Raiders team that Al, when you talk to Al Davis, you get the history lesson, the pride and the poise and all that. But this is a not a strong football team, and Archell has got his work cut out for him. Frank, he should be coach of the year hands down if this team wins the Indeed. AFC West, which is a relatively weak division. But Archell not only has to look forward to the tougher part of the schedule, he's got to figure out a way to 
get the defense to keep the opposition off the board. Offensively, they're in pretty good shape. You've got Jay Schrader and Willie Gold and Marcus Allen, and in a couple of weeks, Bo Jackson. But defensively, a lot of problems. They're last in the league against the rush. They've been moving linebackers in and out all season long. And now they have lost their best defensive player. Van McElroy is on injured reserve. So tonight, the Jets and the Raiders, and I know one thing, Dan, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy from the New York Jets for the Raiders because they have enough problems of their own. Uh, almost as many as Raiders have, Al, and uh, they have not played very well this season. Something that really troubles Joe Walton and his staff, especially in their loss last week to the Colts. Uh, the Jets made mistakes, which they've been doing all year long, but for the first time, their coach was concerned that maybe the effort wasn't there. And if you know Joe Walton at all, you know that is unacceptable. Uh, the Jets tonight have offensive problems, and they're basically injury problems. Uh, Mickey Schuler, their Pro Bowl tight end, will not play tonight. He's their leading receiver. And Al Toon, who would normally be their leading receiver, will try to play tonight, but he is really nursing a sore leg. One positive thing, though, for the New York Jets. They seldom play poorly two weeks in a row. Ken O'Brien has been very erratic this season. The Jets one and three. O'Brien with six touchdown passes and seven interceptions. And the rest of the offense, Freeman McNeil with Roger Vick are the running backs. We'll also see Johnny Hector. We'll watch Toon, who's been hurt. Harper, the other wide out. Griggs spells Schuler at the tight end spot. And the offensive line has been a source of trouble. From the 23-yard line. Freeman McNeil picks up about two. Again, the Raiders last in the league against the rush. Townsend will line up in a down position, but for the moment, it's Wise, Golick, and Scott Davis. And then the linebackers, Lyndon King, they got Jerry Robinson back last week. That'll really help him with Benson and Townsend. And there is the rebuilt secondary. Washington's been hampered by a hamstring pull. We'll keep an eye on him. Johnny Hector is in the game on second and eight as O'Brien retreats in his first pass of the night. A sideline pass taken by Toon. And Al Toon with a nice move. And again, we'll have to watch him, see how much he can play tonight. He was questionable. Picks up the first down. Rice and Eddie Brown as well, all going in the first round. From the 35, wide open is Chris Burkett. The former Buffalo Bill has a first down, taking it to the 50-yard line. The last time we saw Burkett on a Monday night three weeks ago in Buffalo, he was being chewed out by Jim Kelly. Deep guy. They like the way he runs after he catches the short ball. On second and seven, Roger Vick gets wrapped up. Scott Davis makes the initial contact, and Townsend finishes him off. Only 87 and a half. It is tough to win in this league if you can't rush for somewhere around 125, 130 yards a game. You saw Walton's initial reaction. Who missed the block? Third and 14, going deep for McNeil, but incomplete. He'd gotten behind the linebacker, Robinson, as he moved down the sideline, and O'Brien overthrows him. Tried with McNeil. Joe Prokop to kick. And it's a short kick. Bouncing at the 26-yard line. It takes a great... Jet bounce, though, and down at the one. What a break for the Jets. You think punters like artificial turf? Well, at least he's getting closer to the pack. I guess Sam Weiss is next, what, at 44? At 44. He'll age quickly. They all, they all do. One to Willie Gold. With Allen and Smith, the running backs, Gold and Mervin Fernandez off to a great start this year. They like Mike Dial, the young tight end. Graves has been stymied by a lot of holding calls earlier this season. Wisniewski is the rookie at right guard. Kirk spells Mosbar at center. Mosbar is inactive tonight. He's... And up front, Fraze, Mercero, and the veteran Lions at right end. And then the linebackers, Gordon's been bothered with a gippy knee with Benson and Clifton in the middle, and Lagerman, their number one draft choice. Humphrey and Hasty are the corners. Ranachowski and Eric McMillan, who's already intercepted 11 passes in just 17 games. Third and four. And it's Smith again. Turning the corner, picking up the first down. Dropped by James Hasty out at the 14. So they give it to Smith three straight times, and it's a first down at the 14-yard line. At the 14-yard line, first down. This is Marcus Allen. And he's out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Troy Benson running him out of bounds. What about Bo Jackson? Well, in Bo's contract, he gets a week off between baseball and football. This is that week 
He goes into camp next Wednesday, could be activated for the Kansas City game more likely a week from. But the question is now, will Marcus Allen continue to be Mr. Nice Guy and move to fullback? One. Allen looking like he was back at USC. Moves through the middle, but is stopped for no gain by Troy Benson in the middle. Well, I don't think he's a close. Last week to Seattle, so that's been the problem. Here they face the Jets, first and 10 from the 42-yard line, and Freeman McNeil for a gain of seven. Out to the 49, he is stopped by the linebacker, Jerry Robinson. Doesn't get a handle on the ball. Out of the shotgun on third down and three. Raiders rush four, but the Jets pick him up. And it's a first down at the 40-yard line as O'Brien threads it into the arms of Al Toon. So he's already made his second catch. He is stopped by Eddie Anderson before giving up the football. First down, New York at the 40. Second and 10, Toon in motion. Hand off to McNeil, who cuts it back inside. Nice move and takes it to the 30-yard line. Right. Very capable of it, too. Blew a couple of assignments in critical situations. Third down and one. Hector to the left side. He's the short yardage man and picks up the first down. Stopped by Jerry Robinson at the 28, and the penalty marker is down. Holding. 43 offense. Still third down. How bad that leg is, whether or not they go to him. They'd like to go to him on this critical third down. On third down and 11. Soon, straight down the middle. O'Brien looked there, but he was covered. Now he gets free and juggles and can't make the catch. Oh, covered just, by Washington. And oh. Lionel Washington gets there at the last minute. Altoon is going to go ahead and catch that ball, even though he bobbles it. Six straight runs, and out of the air they go with Jay Schrader firing over the middle, and it is Galt making the catch more frequently, and they go right to him. Well, the passing scheme used by Mike Shanahan at Denver really concentrated more on stuff underneath, across the middle, a lot of use to the tight ends and to the running backs. And the wide receivers have been more or less neglected. And 20 yards of reception. On third and seven from the Jet 34 in the scoreless opening quarter. Trader in trouble, sacked at the 36. That's only the fourth sack of the season for the Jets. Kyle Clifton is right there in the West. Third and five. O'Brien for Burkett makes the catch. First down at the 40-yard line. And he's down at the 41. Ten jets from the 41-yard line. Toon in motion. And a little toss to Hector. And Hector with room. And Hector with a first down. Run out of bounds by Harden at the Raider 47-yard line. Normally has to play slam bam football. Griggs in motion. Freeman McNeil looking for room to the outside. Gets inside the 45 and is down at the 41-yard line. We saw a good reason why McNeil averages so much per carry. He's going to try to block Lionel Washington there on the left and without even making contact. It wasn't there. It wasn't when he fell. You could see Al Toon pull his leg up. He couldn't even put it down. I'd have to think that it's going to be... It's really going to be something if Toon plays any productive part in this game. Like a, a blitz dump off the way he tossed it out there when, in fact, he had plenty of time. Third and five from the 42-yard line as O'Brien sets up, fires, and it's broken up by Washington. And no flag. Michael Harper, the intended receiver, great timing on the part of Washington. And it's man coverage all the way that time by Lionel Washington. I mean, yard line. Raider. Protection breaking down. He has to dump it off, and it's Marcus Allen who makes the catch at the 23-yard line. Kyle Clifton covering on the play. Nice improvisation by Allen that time. But, uh, Donald Trump is one of his very best friends. I, I don't know that that's really going to excite Wellington Mara a great deal. <laughs> or the National Football League. He could help build Trump City. Third and ten, Schrader out of the gun, fires after the 38-yard line. Galt on the crossing pattern has the first down. Third down and four. Schrader going deep, but Galt broke the pattern off, and it's incomplete, but there's a flag down back at the 40-yard line. The middle, and the pass was thrown well downfield. 
and the call is against the Jets for holding. Better than this, yeah. because Willie Galt's going to break to the inside. Ball's in the air at this point. Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a horrendous call, and you can hear the reaction of the Jet fans in the stands as it's bad, bad call. Big present instead of punting. It's a first down from the 48-yard line, and enables Schrader to go deep for goal, and he makes the catch out of bounds. Out of bounds at the 7. This is Willie Galt having to back up on the ball, and there's really nothing Galt could have done with that great speed. Second and 10. Tenth play of the drive. Allen wide open and dropped it. Started to look upfield at the 40-yard line. Himself in the huddle as the leader of this team and say, guys, settle down. You're killing us. Let's settle down and play some football. Out of the gun on third down and 10, and a flag is down. The flag was down before the inception of the play. That's when rather than give Ray's, uh, Graves the penalty, I think Dan Turk was late in snapping the ball. The whole line move. Third down and 15, and Schrader gets stumped. It is a live football at the 40-yard line. And Schrader looks hurt. He is flat on his back. To hope that that is the win knocked out of Jay Schrader. He wasn't hit square on by Bird, number 90, the, the rookie. But his forearm and his arm caught Jay Schrader right in the gut, and I think it just had the win knocked out of him. As a matter of fact, he's up yep. on his feet now. Signed the contract yet. They haven't got around to it. And, yeah, I'd wait. very wisely advise him to <laughs> wait and see what falls out of this. Yeah, thanks a lot, Frank. Now, Al Davis will never talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Archell will. <laughs> Third down and seven as O'Brien shoots one after Griggs, the tight end, and a first down as he's finally chased down by Lyndon King. But that's all he had all of last year, seven. Flip side of not throwing a lot of interceptions is taking a lot of sacks, which he's done in his career. Third and seven, a flag is down. McNeil... Gets it to the Raider 49-yard line, but there's a marker down near the line of scrimmage. Who has had a tough couple of years. Howie Long, at one time, one of the most dominating defensive linemen in the league, is finding it tough to play these days. First and 10 from the 49, and O'Brien takes the sack at the 44-yard line. Bob Golick, longtime Brown, picked up by the Raiders, gets the sack of O'Brien. Let's take a look at Bob Golick, a pro bowler with the Cleveland Browns, one of those... Plan B players that the Raiders picked up. And there you could see that Bryant had to pull it down. Mike Harden covering Hector coming out of the backfield, Brother Vic coming out of the backfield, and O'Brien had nothing to do with it. One of the great guys in the National Football League. Bob. Third and eight from the 46-yard line out of the shotgun. O'Brien rolling and throwing, and it's busted up at the 41-yard line, intended for Hector and Lyndon King, longtime Charger linebacker, now with L.A. King else. Saturday night, game one. On first down, a good move by Mueller to break free and stretching to try to pick up the first down. He's just sure. Stopped by Hasty. It'll be second and one. Seven yard line. Trader. Well, what would have been a free play winds up as a sack by Paul Fraze. So there you've got a second and one, and you would think a free play, and the next thing you know, you're third down and long again. These two teams met back in 1968. To this day, it is simply known as the Heidi game. The Jets squandered a late lead. The Raiders scored two touchdowns in an eight-second span, including this end zone recovery by Preston Reidelhuber as the then Oakland Raiders came from behind to beat the Jets 43-32. to Known, of course, as the Heidi game because NBC covering the game opted to show Heidi at its regularly scheduled <laughs> time. And when everybody went away, the Jets had the lead and had to read about it the next morning. Third down and a short seven from the 31 yard line with two minutes to play. Grader over the middle and it's broken up, intended for Mueller, and Radachowski got a hand in on the play. Raiders and the Jets scoreless. New York from the 40 on first and 10. And O'Brien throws to Townsell, who makes the catch on his knees at the 47. It's soften up kind of a pass route there, just that little curl trying to tighten up a corner. Interesting to see if they go long with Townsell. Second and three, and they're going long down the far side, and it is picked off by Terry McDaniel. And from the goal line, McDaniel bringing it back out. Chased by Griggs, chased by Townsell, chased by McNeil, and a run out of bounds. 
at the 20-yard line on the pass intended for Townsell or Burkett on second down and three. This game was 45. And there has not been a scoreless first half in 69 games thus far this season. You can't fault the way Schrader has thrown here in half number one. Second and 10. Over the middle, Marcus Allen is open. He has a first down out at the 34-yard line. Again, the Raiders have all of their timeouts. Allen across that ball. From the 34-yard line. And the catch is made after a juggling effort by Mike Alexander out of Penn State. Good. More or less the, the main reason why Mike Shanahan's no longer coaching the Raiders. Second and 10, and over the middle, it's Marcus Allen, and he's belted at the 45-yard line, just short of the first down, and the Raiders, with the clock running, take a second timeout. <laughs> One out of two is not bad. <laughs> right. One out of two ain't bad, is it? <laughs> Third down, and a short two from the 45. And Mueller picks up the first down at the 39-yard line. That's an interesting play because they're down to their last timeout, and they're not going to use it here. They are not really in field goal range. And what's going on here is they let the clock run down to seven seconds, and they throw to the far side. The catch is made at the 35. Willie Gault down to three seconds. Yep. Baker's longest, as you see, is 48. Gossett to hold on what will be the final play of the first half. And the kick is short, and that's the way the half will end. That's really Jay Schrader's responsibility, I would think, in that situation to call the timeout. Moves them back to the seven-yard line, and it's Smith getting them out of the hole as he takes it out to the 26. So Smith, who played a big part early in the game when the Raiders were pinned at their own one, and find out his status. Tony, of course, injured. And not playing the season for the Broncos. Let's look it up to date shortly. From the 27-yard line, Schrader back to throw. Fires, a catch is made by Fernandez. Breaks the tackle, gets into Jet territory. Inside the 30, he's got a blocker. He's inside the 15. Touchdown, Fernandez. And no flag, 73 yards. Willie Gauld out in front of that one with a key block for Hernandez. Chill era is a bomb. 73 yards to Mervin Fernandez. A lot of nifty moves after the catch. He curls back to the inside. There's the missed tackle by Bobby Humphrey. That's what really breaks it open. And then Eric McMillan, the free safety who was there, only got an arm on Fernandez. And then it's just really with that much open field for a guy with that kind of speed, it's not that difficult to find the end zone. Scoreless first half doesn't remain that way for long. An inflatable doll. And it's not Gumby. No, we, we, we can't show it to you. You can only see it on the American Ecstasy Channel. Jager to put it in the air. And the kick is taken at the 11-yard line by Humphrey, who comes back this way and gets tackled at the 4-yard line by Steve Strahan. Giving them a 7-0 lead. From the 3-yard line, they give it to the up back, and this is Zick who takes it out to the 11-yard line, and we mentioned as the, the Jets try to move out Washington. from the shadow of their own end zone. He knows you had surgery, you're out for the season, but what about the future for you? Well, you know, the thing I'm trying to do, Al, of course, first of all, is trying to get the knee back as healthy as I can, didn't make decisions later. How you feeling right now? Feel good, extremely good. Tony, is, uh, is the knee such that when it happened, you've been hurt before? Do you think it's something that you'll be able to come back from? Do you think you have a chance? I think it's going to be tough, Dan. It's, it's a situation, of course, I had re reconstruction of my interior cruise shift, and at age 35, right. You know, the odds are against me, but they're not insurmountable odds, but uh, it feels good. Every two days, I feel an improvement in the knee. Tony's got a book out, Running Tough Memories of a Football Maverick. Were you really a maverick, Tony? Come on now. <laughs> nice talk, man. Well, that's, <laughs> that's Texas not talk. Not really. <laughs> that's Texas talk. There are a lot of mavericks down in Texas. I'll buy the running tough part of it, though. I've, you have so many records on Monday Night Football. Does it mean that much more to you, Tony? Well, Monday Night Football, you know, the you, you had the audience of America, so every time I was on Monday Night Football, I tried to capture the moment and do something special. Johnny Hector picks up the first. Well, that was a bizarre play in which you get hurt in practice this year, but the uh, happier times coming up right here. You take us through this. 99 yards Not so and long a half. Ago, going off, off right off the center. I cut to my right here, make a defender miss. As we're going down the field, there's two defenders and Drew Pierce, and you, if you can see Drew's legs, they get a little wobbly, so I decided to make my move, thinking I'd get pushed out of bounds at that point, but I didn't. Fortunately for me, it ended up for a 99-yard uh, NFL record. You know the Cowboys only had 10 men on the field for that play. You were aware of that, I guess, Tony. 
I, I wasn't at the time. Uh, actually, I, I thought we had 11 men on the field. Ron Springs was supposed to have been in there, but uh, for some reason, he wasn't there. Reggie, I think, Reggie I think Michael Roy with yeah. a false start here. Yeah, Reggie got a quick false start. start. 68 offense. Still first down. Tony, I started to mention a crazy play in, in, in which you get hurt this year, the injury uh, in, in practice. Yeah, that's what makes it even so so frustrating. You know, we're just in a non-contact drill, and I'm running the pass pattern. Making that, I've made that cut a zillion times over my career. And I go to plant, and it doesn't plant, and the knee gives way. Tony, a historic moment here tonight with Art Shell uh, making his debut as the Raiders. Coach, your thoughts on a, on a black coach, finally a head coach in the NFL? Well, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a step in the right direction, and I'm hoping just like all the other coaches in the National Football League, he's, he's judged on his coaching abilities and his one and loss record and not the color of his skin. Would you ever consider coaching yourself, Tony? Uh, I don't think I'm cut out to be a coach. I, I think it's, with so many different personalities that are in football today, uh, I don't think I have the patience to, to, to really put up with it. You want to keep that headset on as a full-time job? I love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, we knew that. We knew like why. Guys Tony, here, huh? <laughs> time for Tony to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> D.D., great seeing you. <laughs> it was good visiting with you. Good luck with the okay. book, too. Running yeah. tough. Tony Dorsett. Great. Up at the line, and they are playing good defensive football. And they've had to be real good. Again, they are minus Van McElroy, the free safety, who's on injured reserve. They throw underneath, and this time Pantel makes the catch and has the first down. He's tackled by Terry McDaniel. So on third and long, they pick it up. Also, we've got to know, talking about the Raiders' secondary, of course, the Raiders that difficult for them to overcome now with McElroy out as well. Both of their projected starting safeties not in game. And Russell Carter, who had replaced the Torrand, also out. Uh, one time Jet, and nobody is, nobody's within 25 yards of that. But that, again, that's Burkett, and we talked earlier about the little time he's had to work with Kenny O'Brien, the closest Jet. Steve Hurd checked it out. It's 32. 32, yeah, <laughs> in 1957. <laughs> Second and 10. And the catch is made by Griggs, the tight end, the man who is spelling the injured Schuler, and a first down for the Jets at the 48-yard line. And Hundley, who was just picked up from Phoenix recently, is going to get a penalty. That is, and will tack on another 15. That's, that's a lot of harsh things being said about people now in the NFL. Third down and six. And O'Brien, for Townsend, who makes a great catch at the 20-yard line. The coverage by Lionel Washington and Townsell back to the goal line, making the catch at the 20. Two or three yards farther out front, that's an easy jet touchdown. Second and 10 from the 20, 13th play of the drive. O'Brien shoots out to the right and then hits Roger Vick, who takes it to the eight yard line. First and goal. A hopping Roger Vick. Field Davis coming in, I think from screen right. Let's see if we can. Yeah, there comes Davis. Whoop, up into the air. Boy, and Davis is really in a position to, to make the tackle. All of a sudden had a leg and it wasn't there anymore. Danny, first and goal. Town Sell, the man in motion. A little quick toss out to McNeil. And Freeman McNeil to the one-yard line. Stopped by Eddie Anderson. They like to go with Johnny Hector and Roger Vick. They're two big backs the play where Schuler ordinarily would be. This is Hector where he has the great leaping ability, and but that time goes Vick in for the it. touchdown. Good, good drive by the New York Jets. From the three-yard line, remember it started after that Humphrey run back, tackled back at the three, and they go 97 yards and have a chance to tie the game on an extra point by Leahy. For Jet has tied it with five minutes and 28 seconds to play in the third quarter. Over, they tried the left side where he used to work with Gene Upshaw. Tell them if ever did they come up short. Jeff Gossett's kick taken by Townsell at the 43-yard line, gets an initial block, and then goes down at the 50. So the Jets have the football at midfield. Some concrete game plan as to how and when they will elect one. I would think there's a good chance of that happening. But again, better to be slow and right than fast and wrong. Third and six, and wrapped up in the backfield is Freeman McNeil by Scott Davis, number one draft choice last year out of the University of Illinois. Marcus Allen. And out of bounds at the 32-yard line, a first down. From the 33-yard line. And this is... Kerry Porter, 
his first carry of the night out to the 44-yard line. Pretty good-looking running back out of Washington State, 6'1", 220-pounder. Mueller turns the corner, and James Casey runs him out of bounds near the first down marker. Like to see. Well, they came up short last time running on third and short. Here it's third down and two. Play clock was all the way down, and it cost him. It's a delay. And Galt, I think, also, top of your screen, was offside. Well, he all to try to avoid a penalty that uh, they ended up taking anyway. Third down and seven. Good protection and going deep for Alexander and picked off by McMillan. His 12th career interception. And the son of one-time Cardinal Ernie McMillan takes it to the 30, the 35, and is out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And here, Alexander just stops. I mean, he really slows down, and if he stays in full stride, he's a down in the vicinity of the football. And here comes McMillan, his fourth interception this year. Last week, he took one back 92 yards against Indianapolis, and... Pro Bowler a year ago, and Ernie McMillan. <laughs> well, this has been, uh, I'll wait till O'Brien's done here. From the 45-yard line, he hits for a cat, and he's out of bounds about two yards short of the first down. It's been my year to watch sons of, of former teammates. Uh, we with just the first saw what, names, too, Eric. Yeah, we just saw what Eric McMillan did here with his fourth interception of the year, and then earlier in this, you know, earlier this season, we saw the Browns and the Bengals, and Eric Metcalf, the son of Terry Metcalf. Second down. <laughs> We, we didn't win many ball games, but man, they were sure fathering some great sons. <laughs> Good bloodline. Second and two and a first down on the final play of the quarter. Johnny Hector to the 41 yard line, stopped by Mike Harden. And so each team scores a touchdown in the third period. After third down and 11 for the Jets now from the 43 yard line. Fake draw. And then O'Brien slings one intended for Town Cell. And a little well executed except for the throw. Joe Prokop's left footed kick. Will bounce at the eight yard line, take a Raider bounce, and is down at the 10 by Ken Rose. Here are the Raiders now from the 10 yard line, and straight up the middle goes Smith, and a flag is down. And holding 67 offense. Still first down. Dan Turk. Dan Turk, the center, who's filling in for Don Mosbar, the regular center. And they keep it on the ground, and Marcus Allen can only get to the 10-yard line. He is stopped by Kyle Clifton. I think is a little less likely to succeed. Jeff Gossett and the Jets have Harper and Townsell both back, and a fair catch made by Townsell back at the 41-yard oh, line. Excellent, excellent punt. 48 yards. 12-23 to go. We're tied in the fourth. Turf, but boy, it's reminiscent of the shot that we saw Icky Woods take. And Icky Woods ended up having surgery, and I'm not speculating that at all. This is Mc uh, Johnny Hector taking it to the 34-yard line. Burkett in motion. Talks to Vic, and he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Mike Harden coming up, holding his ground, and stopping him short of the first down. And a, a play that never had a chance to, to develop. And it's really been kind of a herky-jerky offensive game by both teams. Third and a short three. O'Brien protected well. Fires too high for Grinch. Picked off at the 15-yard line by Eddie Anderson. And Anderson still on his feet. Anderson out past the 30. Look out. The 40. Goodbye. O'Brien can't catch him. Eddie Anderson on the move inside the 20-yard line and all the way for a touchdown. 87 yards. O'Brien well, does get the pressure from the back side, but it appeared that the ball took off on him. It just sailed and it was an overthrow. This will be the perfect angle to see it. Greg Townsend, he's a designated pass rusher for the Raiders, and he just waffled O'Brien as he released the ball, and here comes Anderson. O'Brien got up, got into the pursuit of Anderson, but this was a no-contest affair as Anderson takes it in for his first touchdown, and that was also Reggie McElroy, number 68, giving pursuit, but Anderson takes it all the way. 
Greg Townsend has all the Raiders sacks into the night. Had the ball. Former down lineman the Raiders converted last year into a linebacker, and they still use him a lot in their four-man alignment. Eight from the 15. O'Brien goes complete to the 21-yard line. The catch is made by Billy Griggs, but you can see he's about a yard, yard and a half short of the first down. Did so well over the years. We'll talk about that in a moment. Third and one from the 22-yard line. And O'Brien, the play fake, nice one-handed catch by Johnny Hector. And a big play for him as he takes it out to the 42-yard line, keeping the drive alive. Run out by oh, Zeph Lee. As let's go. First and ten from the 43-yard line. O'Brien to the far side. Briquette makes the catch. Short gain. Stopped by Washington. Third down and six. O'Brien. And the protection breaks down, and Scott Davis oh, he's sacks him at the 35. That's a trample job there. Boy, now there is there's a case of a guy just getting run over as the old-fashioned bull rush. Nothing fancy, straight ahead. And Mueller and Porter are the running backs, and this is Mueller cutting inside Porter's block and then tackled by Gordon. Totally rejuvenated franchise. They are playing good football. They went from small, quick, to big and powerful, didn't they? Dan Reeves has really gotten some good-sized people there in a hurry. Second and four, and Schrader fires over the middle to a wide open. Mervin Fernandez, who coughs up the ball, and it's recovered by the Jets, but they're saying no, no catch. Fernandez is going to be hit by James Hasty. There is the hit. And boy, by the time we see the ball, it's all the way down in the mid-thigh area of Mervin Fernandez. And keep in mind, the official who made the call was looking right at the ball. Cover up and hold on to the football. A lot of drop passes in tonight's game, especially by the Raiders. Raider fires over the middle of Mueller, and he takes it to the 44 of the Jets, and a big first down. It is classic Raider offense of the years gone by try to get something high percentage and third the run take care of the rest of it third down and 14 Schrader out of the pocket and almost across the line of scrimmage and then throws and the catch is made by Mike Alexander but he is a little short of the first down somehow some way Schrader able to get the ball in there big play I'm sure that was factored into the thinking fourth and one the play clock is already down to six seconds. They have to get it off in a hurry. Unless they're just trying to draw them off, but no, they go for it, and it's close. Steve Smith stumbling and may have stumbled his way into a first down. They have to get to the 33 and a half. Two timeouts for men. Third down, 17 from the 40-yard line. Schrader flushed out, looking, throwing long. No Raider is there. And it's fourth down, and that will take us to the two-minute warning. It comes with 159 and a Raider punt upcoming when we come back. Make that throw. That's not the proper read. Second and ten out of the shotgun. The throw underneath to Griggs, and he's tackled by Anderson. That's a first down at the 30. Ball comes loose after the play. Jets conserving their timeouts. They have because he's not primarily receiver for the Jets. Nevertheless, he is a tight end. That was right in there. Now they're going to have to keep in mind... Hey, you're going to have to think first down. Third and ten, and into traffic, Townsell somehow comes up with the ball at the 47-yard line, tight roping the sideline. In traffic, 17-yard gain, first down, New York. He goes back to the more orthodox setup. There's still plenty of time with both timeouts. Second and ten, and the catch is made at the 40-yard line, uh, but the ball comes loose, and it's incomplete. He, incomplete, intended for Keith Newber. He bur burst into tears, look on his face. Third down and ten. Fake draw, O'Brien throws, and the catch is made by Burkett at the 34-yard line, a first down. Stopped by Anderson, and the clock was 53 seconds. Now the difficult ones we can handle. And timeout called by the Jets, so they've got one remaining. But they'll have to be able to get back and get into the huddle quickly. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. O'Brien nearly sacked, stumbling, sacked at the 50-yard line. Of all times to get sacked. Mike Wise and Howie Long. Move out of the pocket. 
He is not a good scrambler, and it really showed that time. They need 24 for the first. They throw it underneath, and the catch is made at the 34-yard line by Townsell. Anything that even remotely looked like an attempt to get to a receiver, and as you can say, as Dan said a moment ago, he's well, he's not the most agile coming out of the pocket. That's not his strong suit whatsoever. Trying to get just enough yardage for the first down. And O'Brien looking for 11 yards and has it. A first down at the 15-yard line. Chris Burkett, but they can't stop the clock. The three wideouts all to the right. From the 15-yard line, O'Brien. Flag is down. The pass is much too long. Oh, that's going to be holding. Eight yards out of the end zone, and Howie Long... Final play of the game. No secret where they're going with it here. And O'Brien for the end zone. It is knocked down by Terry McDaniel, and Art Shell has won in his Raider debut. <laughs> I think that's a happy man. I wonder why. An ecstatic man. He is no longer the first black coach in the NFL. He's just a winning coach right now. Let him savor it for a while. Just win, baby, is the Raider theme, and that's exactly what he has done. It weren't pretty, but it's a W. And for the Jets, well, one and four is their start, and it is a long way to go.